My name is Ken uh, Yagi and I work at Adobe Animal Hospital in Los Altos. I'm a veterinary technician here. I've been in practice for about 15 years. Um, I'm also a veterinary technician specialist in emergency and critical care and small animal internal medicine. And I also work with um, a lot of uh, the nonprofit associations out there that has to do with ECC, um, like a Veterinary Emergency Critical Care Society, as well as some technician associations like the National Association of Veterinary Technicians in America. And Adobe Animal Hospital here, uh, when, we do, when we use gravity infusion, it's typically with a blood transfusion. Um, for the IV fluid, crystalloid infusions, we typically have a IV pump that we use, and that's not a problem. Um, but when it comes to blood transfusions, we worry about the damage to the red cells that the pumps cause, and so we use gravity infusion instead. Uh, gravity infusion definitely has its challenges, uh, mainly because uh, it's difficult to control to the exact rate that you'd like it to be. Um, it has to do with the, the roller clamp being very sensitive to um, small movements as, it, as you try to tailor down your gravity flow rate, the drip rate, to uh, the, the finest um, rate that you want it to be. Even though we know that in our heads in terms of uh, having to make a drip come down every six seconds, fine-tuning that roller clamp just to be just right is very, very difficult. Um, and on top of that, it's not just your fine motor movement that's going to affect it. Um, the amount of blood that's left in the bag as the transfusion progresses is going to affect it because there's less gravity um, pull if there's less blood in there. Uh, the uh, position of the patient, how patent the catheter is, or how positional the catheter is, and is another um, variable there that will change the drip rate. And so it's definitely something that you need to um, you need to monitor on a very frequent basis to make sure that the rate that you set it at is actually the rate that it's continuing to be at. Whether a uh, blood pump should be used for blood transfusions or not, or whether gravity drip is better for patients when we're performing uh, blood transfusions, it has been uh, actually an uh, age-long debate, uh, even in the human medical field, that uh, you know, people have got, gone back and forth about whether one way is better over the other. Um, gravity drip will uh, theoretically be less damaging to the red cells and it'll make it last longer in the patient once it's transfused, so it's better for uh, the patient benefit from the transfusion itself. Uh, but at the same time, it's hard to control the rate that it's uh, transfused at, or the, the total volume is hard to determine once the bag starts to sag down because some of the blood has gone in. And so we don't know how, how much of a progress we've made on the transfusion. You can get around that by using an IV pump, but if you do, then we worry about the mechanical damage that might be caused by the IV pump to the red cells, which makes it last a shorter amount of time in the patient. So you can control the rate better, and you can control the volume of, that's being infused better, but there's a question about whether there's a long-term benefit for the patient to transfuse damaged red cells. Uh, one way to get around it is to use a device called Drip Assist, um, which is a device that monitors the drip rate for us and um, calculates out the, the actual uh, rate that, it, that the drip rate is going at as in terms of the mils per hours. And that uh, allows us to keep it at a certain rate that we want it to. It'll alarm once it uh, steps out of that uh, range. And it also keeps track of the volume being infused by calculating through the number of drips. And so that's very useful in terms of monitoring. It still doesn't take away the, the fact that you have to um, fine tune the roller clamp to the correct rate that you need it to be at, but it'll tell you when it comes out of that range. And so that's very useful in terms of monitoring. We don't have to go back to it every few minutes to make sure that the drip rate is correct. We just need to listen out for that alarm, which is great.